not. How can you miss that? It's a sitting dog. Oh! All right then, Hot Show. Let's see if you can do any better. Okay. See? I can ring your bell at any time. Oh, yeah, how come I don't know you weren't police Mark's Woman of the Year or something? You just have to trust me. Would you all shoot a body with his breeches down? That reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a social call then, Mr. Cullen. Yeah, pretty much. Just checking how you're doing. Roger, what is she? Yeah, her mother's uh, with the kids. Thought of best in case of problems. Not long now. Yeah, one more day to go, then I can stop worrying. Court number one, 10 30. Don't be late. I won't let you down. But if you do have any problems from Hughes, you know what to do. Yeah, push the panic button and run like hell. And I'll be around here faster than. A speeding bullet? Yeah, something like that. But anything at all, Denny. Don't hesitate. Don't you worry about me. I'm no hero. If you shows up round here, I'll let you know. Smartish. <laughs> Hello? No, she's not, I'm afraid. Can I take a message? No, no, I'm just a friend she's met for lunch. She'll be back in a minute. OK. Right. That's my... Who was that? Uh, Who was it? It's just you were, wanting to know where you were. Don't worry, I told them you're meeting a friend for lunch. Relax. Oh, I'd better think about going back. I only answered your phone. I know, I know. Oh, you'd be amazed at how many mountains some of those lads make out of something so trivial. I'm sorry. You weren't to know. Am I forgiven? Give us a kiss, then. Who's McAllister's boyfriend, then? Why would I know? Well, you know her better than any of us, didn't you? She's a bit of a go, is she? I've no idea, Mickey. You fancy your chances, then? I wouldn't say no, I can't mention it, yeah. Mind you, she already spoken for. How do you know that? Because some geezer just answered her phone and said he was a friend. Yeah, well, maybe he was. Nah. Where was she, then, eh? She that's the reason. She's obviously nipped out for a lunchtime quickie, gone into the bathroom and her phone's rang. It's obvious. Well, you know what, Mickey, I reckon you just made two plus two add up to about 150. <laughs> Sierra One from Sierra Oscar, you receiving? Go ahead, Sarge. Yes, 2222 Ellet Gardens, panic button alarm. Sierra Oscar from Sierra One, show us dealing, over. Don't be around. No idea, girl. I've got a witness panic alarm to attend to and I'm supposed to be going over her APA this afternoon. Let her know, will you? Quiet. You better come in. Look, and this. I haven't touched anything. What's happened? I got back from the shops, just nipped out for a paper light and came back to this. What? Somebody been having a drink? Well, no, that's mine. The, the wife's away. And then there's the furniture. This isn't how you left it? No, that chair was over there. This table was over here with last night's dinner plates on it, but they're in the kitchen now. Right. Your wife couldn't have come back unexpectedly and... No, she's taking the kids to her mother's for safety till after the trial. Don't you two know anything? You're a witness, yeah? I was supposed to have protection. OK, so somebody's come in and rearranged your furniture and taken your dirty plate into the kitchen? Yes. But why? To let me know they know where I am and that they can get me. I'll have to be moved. I can't stay here. Not if you want me in court tomorrow.
What's happened? Not a lot. Mr Brown went down to his local shop for a newspaper and when he got back, he reckons his furniture had been rearranged. Smashed up? No, tidied. There's an empty whiskey bottle in the living room. And his shopping bag had another bottle in it. OK, I'll get the picture. Would you try a few of these houses, see if anyone saw anything, and maybe take a look around? We'll make it obvious. We need him to feel safe. Sir. Denny, how you doing? Nice lunch. Nice lunch. Oh dear, something wrong with the service. The service was just fine, Mickey. It was the interruptions I didn't appreciate. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. Put him off his tide, did he? It would take more than you to do that, believe me. What did you want, anyway? Papers on the carling case. They're on my desk! But I suppose you wouldn't even think to look there, would you? Where's the DI? Is he not in? Uh, he's been called out, Sarge. He'll be back for your appraisal later. There they are. Well, it's no good now, Sarge. Moment's passed. <sighs> you didn't actually see Hughes, did you? No, but... There's no doubt it's a worrying time for you, Denny. You know what he's like? And I don't underestimate how anxious you must be feeling about giving evidence against him. But he doesn't know where you live. He does. He's been here in my house. I know it. This chair was over there. The table was here. What? You're telling me Carl Hughes came to your house and tidied up? You can joke about it, Mr Cullen, but it's not you that's got to stand up in court tomorrow. It is, actually. I've got to give evidence too, remember? It's different for you. It's your job. Yeah, and it's my job to look after you, so trust me. Now I'll go and make us both a cup of tea, OK? CID. Gov. Yeah, she's back. What can I do for you? I want you and Duncan to go around and see Carl Hughes, number one Tubbs Lane. See what he's been up to this afternoon, from about midday onwards. I don't think he's been round here, but just warn him off in case he's thinking about it, will you, Mickey? One Tubbs Lane. Yeah, I've got it. Hello? Now? Jamie, I can't. I'm busy. There's a huge bunch of to have been doing. No, I can't. Look, I'll call I'll you back later, you. OK? Yep, bye. Probably nothing, but the DI wants us to go around and check this bloke's not been terrorising his witness. <laughs> by tidying his house. Fantastic. How are we going to know if he's been doing that, eh? Is that Ross on the phone? What do you want? Nothing, but I can't wait. What's the DI up to? Oh, this Charlie's got starting tomorrow. Chief witness thinks someone might be trying to scare him off. And he's letting that pair of jokers deal with it. Well, maybe if you'd have been here when he heard, he might have asked you. <sighs> Couldn't find any sugar. Don't use it myself. So, have you seen anyone recently? Anyone who might know Hughes? Nah. It's strange how all your friends disappear once they know you're giving evidence against him. So there's no one who could let slip where you live? No. Look, I'm not crazy, Mr Cullen. Hughes has been here. I know him. I used to work for him once, remember? Yeah, but... He torched my pub, intimidated my staff, scared my wife witless just because I got a bit behind with my protection payments. He'll stop at nothing to save himself from jail. I know. And without me, you don't have a case, so you better take me seriously. That dog's been well fed. Don't fancy being its lunch. What do you want? Can't use DC Web, DC Lake, Sonny. I didn't think you was a Sally Army. Like I said, what do you want? Were you out this afternoon? Yeah. I spent lunchtime down at Boozer. Can anyone support that? Yeah, the landlord. He'll tell you I was there from Oakland till about ten minutes ago. You're lucky to find me on. I will, Chet. You do that. You know, witness intimidation is a very serious offence. That is a surprise. Good job I ain't done it then. Done what? Anything. Just make sure you're doing okay. Or what? You'll be back. Do me a favour. Now, if that's all, I've got a lot to do. I'm in court tomorrow, as if you didn't know. And 
I want to be well prepared. I wonder what charm school he went to. I don't know. But I would not want to get on the wrong side of that guy's out. Trouble is, Denny is on the wrong side of him, and I don't think us turning him up will make any difference. Yeah. Let's go. Sir, can I help you? I'd like to speak to Sergeant McAllister, please. Is she expecting you? Uh, no, but I'm sure she'll see me. Just tell her it's Jamie Ross. All right. Uh, you might have to wait for a moment. Perhaps if you tell her I'm here. Yes, sir. Would you like to take a seat? Yes, McAllister? Here? No, no, it's OK, Reg. I'll be right down. something important to say to you. And it couldn't wait till I got off duty then. It's business. Oh, well, that's all right then. But there's no reason my business can't be pleasure too. No one else saw anything suspicious, Gov, and Hughes has apparently been in his local all afternoon. Well, given that he's up for extorting money from pub landlords, I'd say that alibi with a pinch of salt. Yeah, it's been checked. But we've no reason to believe he knows where to find Denny, or that he intends to do anything about him if he does. So you think Denny's overreacting? Overindulging in the Dutch courage, more like. I see. There's no sign of a break-in, no damage. He's just forgotten how he left the place. Yeah, but you don't want him deciding not to give evidence. No, you're right. We need to reassure him. But if we take his paranoia too seriously, he's going to think he really is in danger and do a runner anyway. Well, if you think Denny's got the right level of protection, I'll leave it in your hands. Gov. Oh, it might be an idea to get uniform to drive by when they can. It's only until tomorrow. Yeah, sure. But how do you know a witness is going to be intimidated? Because I was on the case. I was preparing the papers for tomorrow when Ardman tells me it's been settled out of court. Could it have been? This isn't a case of suing someone for damages. It's the Queen against a scrote who threatens people and burns down their pubs. How's that going to be settled out of court? We're talking Hughes here, aren't we? It's certainly his style. So you think Arben knows what's going to happen? I think he probably set it up. We know he's not against the use of legal methods if he gets his clients off. That's a very big accusation, Jamie. Believe me, Ardman knows the court case isn't worth working on because there isn't going to be any evidence. Yeah, if we're to prove Ardman's involvement, can you get anything? He's not a fool. He got Brown's address somehow. We spend our lives tracking down people. He wouldn't find it hard, but proving it's another matter. Well, you'll try, hmm? Will you make it worth my while if I do? Payment and results. OK? Mm -hmm. Paul, the uh, witness intimidation problem. It was Denny Brown, wasn't it? Hey, why? Jamie Ross just told me Denny's going to be targeted. Did he find? Yeah. Well, how does he know? Because Ardman's involved. Is the DI around? No, he's with Mr Meadows earlier, but I haven't seen him since. Hughes has already been round to Denny's, hasn't he? There's no great rush. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the way I heard it was the governor dismissed it anyway. Just thought Denny was being paranoid. I'd better find him, then. Tell him he's wrong. <laughs> Where's the point in staying home all day if there's no one in here? It's a matter of personal freedom. Show me again, Chet. No, we're looking for Cole Hughes, mate. I don't know if he's been in today, has he? Friends of his, are you? Yeah. No, he's not been in. No, we missed him. Might be in later if you want to leave him a message. Yeah, I will do, actually. Got a pen on you, mate. Cheers. Tell Mickey and Duncan to go back to Hughes' place and keep a discreet watch. He may decide to have another go at Denny. What about backup? 
Inspector Munro has agreed to a few drive-bys, but I want a patrol car parked outside Denny's house from now till he's safely in court giving evidence, if he can spare one. And Denny, do you want us to call him, let him know? No, if he thinks Hughes might be back, he'll be straight out the door. We'll never find him in time for the trial. And the landlord said he ain't seen Hughes all day, Sarge. All right, we'll get him in straight away. Yeah. Trouble. <clears throat> Callister says the governor wants us to keep Hughes under observation. <laughs> Discreetly. Discreetly, we stick it like a sore thumb anywhere near Hughes's place. What's that? We've got four wheels in our car for a start. Man, come on with you. Sierra 1 from Sierra Oscar receiving. Go ahead, Sarge. Yeah, it's 22 Ellet Gardens again. D.I. Cullen wants you to go round there and meet him outside the house. ASAP. Yeah, all received. On way. Mr. Brown is becoming a pain. Did you get its number? It's sitting right there, it's a red school. That's really observant, there must be millions of them. Cullen. Gov, I think we've missed him. This red full desk has gone from outside. Right, stay there and let me know if he turns up, OK? And check if the area car's got around to Denny's place yet, will you, Duncan? Traffic's bloody terrible. Sierra 1 from Sierra Oscar, what is your ET? Yeah, yeah. Almost there. Two minutes max. Two minutes, Sarge. Is this an urgent call? Just get a move on, will you? Denny's out. He's probably going to get himself another bottle or two. That's right, he's going to be paralytic by the time we get him to court. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Motorbike, Debbie. Sierra 158, Juliet, Whiskey, November. Some flying glass, though. It's a good thing your witness wasn't here. <laughs> Probably booked himself in the first night of Malaga if he's got any sense. I got the uh, number of the bike. Yeah, it was stolen about an hour ago. I just heard. This Hughes knows what he's doing. Yes, sir. Which is more than can be said for you, right? I specifically asked you if Denny needed a high level of protection, and you said no. I'm perfectly aware that I got it wrong, sir, and that we probably don't have a witness anymore. But if no buts, Alex. If you consider yourself lucky, you just lost him. And he's not dead. No, we've got to see you ASAP. No, me and DC Riley. No way. No, it's too big a risk. 
I'm well aware that you're taking a risk as well, but that's different. It just is. All right, then, in the bowling alley in 20 minutes. Right? Good. Any problems? Just the usual moans about slipping out the office, that sort of thing. Well, he's got a point. Tough. We've all got difficult jobs. Ready? Hello again. You two still here? Can I ask you where you've been, Mr Hughes? Doing a bit of shopping down the high street. <coughs> with the wife, of course. Reason to believe you may have been involved in a serious incident. Yeah? Well, I've got an alibi. Good one this time, is it? Better. Nevertheless, we'd like you to come to Sunhill now for a few commissions, Mr Hughes. You're arresting me? If you insist, yeah. You'd better call me brief, Yvonne. Jamie, I'm sorry to call you at work, but Hughes is not the anti. You pulled Hughes in? That's right, he's with Arbners now, that's why we thought it'd be okay to call you. We need you to get some more information if we're to keep Hughes off the street. You've got no evidence, not to mention no witness for tomorrow. I didn't say it was going to be easy, we'll just have to work harder to get this sorted. I will, you mean? No, we all have to. Now, I need you to find out how Hughes got Denny's address, and if Arbman knew what was going on, can you do that? Sorry. You what? I don't think you understand the risks involved here. Oh, I understand. We all take risks, but the moment the going gets tough, you back off. Me? Back off? That's rich coming from you. You can have this back. What is that? Because I misled you. Carl Hughes was in here lunchtime. Well, he called to remind you that, did he? I thought you might have been debt collectors or something. If I'd known you were the law, I'd have been straight with you. And no-one's put you under any pressure to say this? It's the truth, and I'll happily make a statement to that effect. Carl Hughes was in here from 12 till about half two, I think. Well, he never left the room? No. Nope. Not even to take a leak? No. Nope. Never left my sight for a second. Good enough for you? So what are you saying? It's quite simple. I've had enough. I want out. You're behaving like a two-year-old. Now is not the time to change your mind. I can call time whenever I want. Of course you can. But it'd be a great help to us if you could stay on the case a bit longer. I mean, Denny Brown's life's on the line here, Jamie. You ain't going to miss next time. I'm very sorry, DC Riley, but I can't help you. I just resigned from Arben and Hobbs. Jamie, wait. Hang on here. Uh, who did you resign to? I left a note on my desk when I left. Mr Arben will get it tomorrow. Look, I need to sort him out. Can you give me a minute here, please? Paul, I think we can salvage something here. Can you give me a bit of time? What are we talking about salvaging here? Ross's job? The case? Or your love life? Paul! Don't turn your back on me, Paul. He doesn't seem happy. I'll sort him out later. Is that how you deal with all the men in your life? Will you sort me out later or am I expendable? Will you tell me what is going on here? Why are you doing this? It's time I moved on, that's all. Why? Is this because of me? <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. I've had enough of doing Arden's dirty work, and yours for that matter. That's it? You're trying to get back at me? No. Sometimes you know when something is right and when it's not. So you go. The Q's obviously got it too. It's not your fault, Duncan. Just wasn't a good feeling watching that scumbag walk out of here, a free man. Well, maybe we'll get him on something else, eh, Gov? Yeah. Nothing too trivial, I hope. I love the smell of singed eyebrows in the morning. I bet you Hughes was shocked to see him at Denny's, especially when it was too late to do anything about it. Yeah, I bet the boss weren't too pleased either. <laughs> Denny, this is Alex Cullen again. I've been trying to find you. I want to talk to you to explain what happened. Listen, if you get this message, call me back. Just let me know you're okay. Or better still, meet me in the cafe on Plessy Street at 6.30. Please. If I stay at Ardman and Hobbs, I'll always be an informant first and a lover second. That's unfair, Jamie. Is it? <laughs> See? This is not a good time to be doing this right now. Will it ever be? 
I mean, you'll always be worried about someone finding out about our relationship. Because there are rules to this sort of thing. Exactly. Think about it. If I resign, we can be open about us. I know, but... Look, do you want me to be a lover or an informant? I'm not going to be both. It's up to you. I love that, of course. You can leave your letter of resignation where it is. I need you to do one last thing, though. Hughes. No. If you want this, we need to sort this out, then we can start again. Why not before? Because there's not just us to be thinking about, there's Denny as well. You're just trying to lead me on. No, I want this. I want this as much as you. We can't leave Denny in the lurch. He's relying on us. Can't you say you'll do this? What do you want me to do? We'll have let Hughes go soon. As you say, we've got no evidence. In fact, he's probably gone already. And? I need you to set up a meeting with him and me. <laughs> say I'm a colleague or something. Well, you're joking, right? I mean, how am I supposed to do that? Say Arben and Hobbs are getting together a series of cases against Sun Hill CID. False arrest, tampering with the evidence, that sort of thing. Say I'm collecting details. I want to ask him about this afternoon. See if he can help us. <laughs> Hughes is a dangerous bloke. I know that. So does Denny. But he's no great brain, either. He'll fall for it. Anything to irritate the police. He'll fall for it for as long as it takes you to confront him with whatever evidence you can get from this meeting. And once he's found out that I've set it up, I'm dead. This isn't about getting evidence, Jamie, I promise you. It's about telling him Denny's been frightened off by the petrol bomb and he won't be appearing in court. I don't understand. It's about getting Hughes off Denny's back so he and his family can live in safety. Whilst we ask him about the arrest, we let it drop that he needn't worry as Denny's done a disappearing act. After all, you are in one. It was your boss that put him in danger in the first place. Up, did you? What is your problem? Are you going to come straight out with it or keep giving me snide digs? Look, whatever's going on between you two, I don't want to know. Fine. Yeah, well, that's as long as it doesn't rebound on me. Because let me tell you something, if it's my career that ends up on the line, it's going to be you that's going down, not me. Thanks so much for sharing that with me, Paul. Now, can we get back to business? Fine. Good, because we've got a job on and not much time to do it. Mr. Cullen. I can't. Not stand up in court and face him, not after I saw what he'd done to my home. You could have a new home, Denny, a new identity. It wouldn't stop him, though, would it? I'm talking about police protection, night and day. He'll never be able to find you. I'll spend the rest of my life watching my back. And it's not just me, is it, Mr. Cullen? There's the wife, kids. Sorry, I know you don't have a case without me. So what are you going to do? Get as far away from here as possible for as long as possible. Spain, maybe. I can't say I blame you. Well, good luck. Cheers. We'll get him, Denny. Another time, maybe, but we will get him. Then you can come back home again. One of my breath, though, eh? He's fixing up a meeting with Hughes later tonight. So what exactly do you intend to do? I'll be wired up. Paul will be in a van outside listening in. Ross and I will explain that we're getting evidence on false arrests, then say that Denny's done a bunk. So, no witness, no evidence, no trial. All Hughes has got to do is turn up in court and feign surprise when the case is dropped. And meanwhile, you try and get Hughes to say something to incriminate himself? Hopefully, yes. What about Ross, your informant? Is he OK about all this? He's as keen to get Hughes as we are. He's been a good source. Shame to blow his cover like this. To be honest, he was leaving anyway, sir. He's decided it's time to move on. So where's Hughes? He's on his way home. We had nothing to hold him on. His house was clear. So he didn't find a bomb factory under the marital bed, then? Sadly, no. 
OK, get on to Ross and arrange the meeting. I'll get permission from the DAC for the op, but I think you're going to need some more backup, so I'm going to put Mickey in the van with Paul. Yes, sir. Oh, and I'll arrange for some uniform as well, just in case. <clears throat> testing, testing. One, two, three. Loud and clear. Look, I still think your informant should be wired up as well. These things are always going wrong. No, he's too anxious about it. It'll just have to be me. He does know you're going to be wired, doesn't he? I mean, you have fully briefed him, Sarge. Of course. You ready? Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. I'd better get going. Yeah. Just tell me this is all kosher, Paul. Well, DCI Meadows and the DAC are both OK, then. So it's got to be, isn't it? Yeah. Not here yet, then. He will be. You didn't suspect anything? I did exactly as you said. And your letter of resignation? It's still on my desk. Mr. Arden will read it first thing tomorrow, so there's no going back now. You're doing the right thing. I hope so. What will you have to drink? Mineral water. No sign of Hughes yet. What's going on in there? Uh, he's buying her a drink, a mineral water. No, what's really going on in there? I wish I knew. Let's go through it before he arrives. There's nothing to go through. It'll be fine. Just leave them to talking to me. <laughs> He's not going to like that. He'll talk to me, not you. Because he knows you? Because I'm a man. He's a bit old-fashioned that way. Oh, another male chauvinist, eh? <laughs> Much worse than me, sweetheart. <laughs> do you think this will do it? Do what? Be enough to get him off Denny's back. I mean, that's what we're here for, isn't it? You're not thinking of trying anything else, are you? She better not be losing it in there. We don't want to repeat performance of that drug bus she organised. No, I don't think she'd risk that again. Well, she better not. I want a long and glorious career. Well, long anyway. Here he is. Just gone in now. There we go. I'll be a bit more private now. Mr Hughes, we're just going to take that table over there so we can be a bit more private. Well, you said you was bringing a colleague. You never said she was a woman. Is it a problem? No. Well, give me something to look at while we do the business. <laughs> What's the sound like? Yeah, sweet. But I don't think young Sergeant McAllister's having too much of a good time right now. Why? You want to hear what this huge bloke's saying to me. <laughs> What's this all about, then? Your arrest this afternoon. They were just trying it on. That's what Jamie said. He's a bright lad. Do you think I could have a case against them? It all depends on whether they knew there was no evidence against you at the time. They knew, all right. How do you know they knew? I had an alibi. The old lady. Well, someone at the house might have seen you. At Denny's? You're joking. I mean, I wasn't there, was I? Nor was he. So Jamie said. Just as well under the circumstances. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't get it. I, I thought he was supposed to be there when it happened. And risk killing him? No way. <laughs> well, that was the point, wasn't it? No. The point was to frighten him. And I reckon he's pretty frightened right now. So you knew that he wouldn't be there when you threw that petrol bomb thing? You're a much nicer man than I've been led to believe. Don't let anyone else hear you say that. Don't worry. It can be our little secret. What you mean is, if you don't need to actually hurt anyone to intimidate them, why risk the additional charges? One of the tricks of the trade. And I give you that little gem, free and gratis. <laughs> now, that it. Only I've got a dog running in at 7.30. Have I got a case? It'd be hard to prove without admitting your involvement in the intimidation, so perhaps we ought to leave it. I mean, the main thing is you needn't worry about Denny. He's long gone and he won't be in court tomorrow. I knew that. How? 
Because whatever else Denny is, he's not stupid. Ooh, well, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I mean, I'd be worrying whether or not he's going to turn up tomorrow or not. You might have just frightened him. You don't know what Denny could do. I mean, I, I don't you understand. You should leave the thinking to me and him. Right? The whole point about petrol bombs is they're frightening. It doesn't matter if I got Denny this afternoon or just an empty house. He's gonna know. As long as he's a threat to me, I'm gonna find him and keep lobbing him through his windows till him, his missus and his kid are toast. That's why I know he's not gonna be in court tomorrow. You got that? I'll be seeing you. You certainly will. That's it. We got him. Brilliant. Get it all? Yeah. Loud and clear, especially the last bit. So that's what you were doing? What's the problem? You were wired and I'm finished, you bitch! You didn't tell him? What's going on? Nothing. Nothing? You were leaving anyway, remember? Leaving my job, yes, but thanks to you, I'll have to leave Sun Hill too. No, Hughes will be sent down on this evidence. You'll be fine. Trust me. Trust you? I would trust you to clean my flat. Do you want me to go after him? No, let him go. It's for the best. Okay, we're on. Josh has sent the jury out. Wants to listen to the tape before he decides whether to allow it or not. But it's looking promising. Does he want me to confirm where it came from? Well, he may have some questions on that, so uh, be prepared. No turning back now. Hello, sir. Can I help you? Yes. Sergeant McAllister, please. Uh, she's not here at the moment. Will someone else do it? No. I'll wait. The whole point about petrol bombs is they're frightening, right? It doesn't matter if I got Denny or just an empty house. He's going to know. As long as he's a threat to me, I'm going to find him and keep lobbing him through his windows. Till him, his missus and his kid are toast. That's why I know he won't be in court tomorrow. You got that? Yeah, I've got that. Mr. Brillis, 14 Ruby Terrace. Yeah. And you've definitely no idea what you did with him? Uh-huh. OK. Yep, well, I'll enter it in the lost property book. One set of dentures last seen at the bedside. Yep. Thank you, sir. Do you have any idea how much longer she's going to be? No, I don't. Look, you sure you don't want to see someone else? Like DC Riley, perhaps, or someone more senior? No. No, I'll wait a while longer. Stupid old... He's only got to decide whether or not to allow the tape. What's his problem? Using covert techniques is a legal minefield, especially when the suspect thinks the snout's his legal advisor. I'm amazed at DAC let you try it. I'm even more surprised Ross agreed. Hughes is guilty. We all know he is. He would have made a confession if his legal advisers weren't bent. Even so. The end doesn't justify the means. Well, it should do. I put Ross on the line for this. You'd better allow it. Debbie, is there more to this? I'm sorry, Alex, but the judge finds the tape evidence inadmissible. We could appeal, but the CPS reckon it's useless. They're dropping the case. Thanks a lot, Reg. Oh, yeah, well, sorry, Paul. I mean, he's been here for an hour, you know. I didn't know what time Sergeant McAllister was going to get back. I want to talk to Debbie. She's in court. Still? I'm surprised the judge didn't kick her case straight into touch. Look, should we do this somewhere else? Thank you. Thank 
you, Paul. I'll take over from here. Didn't the judge allow you to play your tape, then? Yes, he did. He ruled it inadmissible. So after all that risk, Thank and you. we're no better off... Thank you. Did Hughes hear the tape? Yes. So he knows what I did? Yes. How could you do that? Jamie, I'm a police officer. That doesn't give you the right to lie and cheat to get your own way. I'm sorry. I should have told you the score from the word go. Yes, you should. I didn't think you'd agree to it. And you'd have been right. What's done is done. Can we not put this behind us? And carry on as if nothing's happened. You've left Arden and Hobbs. You said, if you're not an informant, we can see each other. You knew I wouldn't be able to stay in Sunhill after this. Not if you's got off. And if you'd have asked me, I'd have told you there's no way your little scheme would ever have worked. It was worth a try. No, what you mean is I wasn't worth worrying about. You know what Hughes is like. Look at Denny Brown. He wouldn't dare go after you. You want me to hang around, find out, be bait, forget it. I can't rely on you to protect me, so I'm getting as far away as possible. What about us? I miss you. Oh, yeah, for about ten minutes. Our relationship was doomed the moment you realised I was no further used to your career. Jamie, that's unfair. This isn't the way I wanted it. You expect me to believe that. You had this plan from the start. What? You wanted to be the star. Save the case and get rid of an embarrassing encumbrance at the same time. That's ridiculous. You were worried I'd be careless, that someone might find out we'd been sleeping together. What if we split? What would stop me from complaining the affair had started before I'd stopped working for you? You had to get rid of me. No! There's nothing you wouldn't do to further your precious career. She's just gone upstairs, sir. Do you want me to call her back? No. I want to talk to Detective Inspector Cullen. I want to make a complaint. Look, meeting him off in your own time is one thing, but blatantly excluding me when I'm his co-handler and doing it in front of Reg is taking liberties. Well, it's something that's not going to happen in the future, so stop wetting your knickers. Debbie, in here. What's all that about? No idea. No idea? Or is it like with your brother? More of a case of you don't want to know. I'm going to lunch. Let me know if I miss anything. I'll come with you. Yeah, still find you in the canteen. Yeah, well... Maybe I'm just buying myself some thinking time. He said you slept with him. He's lying, Gov. And why would he do that? He's angry that he's been blown as an informant and he's trying to get back at me. That's all, Gov. So you've played this by the book, haven't Absolutely, you? Absolutely, Gov. Paul was with me at every meeting. Ask him. I intend to. And if I suspect there's any truth in these allegations, I'll be down on you like a ton of bricks. Now get out. And Sergeant McAllister, I don't ever want to have this conversation with you again. Do you understand? Yes, Gov. Jamie's told the DI that he and I slept together. It's a lie, of course. Is it? You know it is. I wouldn't do anything like that. Is that right? You two seem to be getting on pretty well from where I was standing. But there's a difference between getting on well and sleeping together. Yeah, look, I don't like being taken for a ride any more than Ross did. That's not the way it was. I need you to say that you were with me every time. Well, even though I wasn't. I mean, you bent the rules and you expect me to keep quiet. Even though my career is on the line just as much as yours. You've never bent the rules, Paul. Oh, what's that supposed to be? Like when your brother rented out his lockup to those French car thieves. That isn't true. Isn't it? No. He didn't have the lockup till after they'd gone. Didn't he? Oh, I'm so sorry. Jamie must have got it wrong, which is strange, because he got everything else right. Yeah, we don't have any proof. And you haven't got any proof that he and I have slept together, so what are you going to tell the DI? We've both got information that could finish the other's career. We're into a Mexican standoff. Who's going to fire first?
We don't want the gay community thinking that if it was straight men being attacked down there, we'd have made an arrest by now. I remember when PC stood for police constable around here. Could you describe the man that attacked you by any chance? No, I I'm sorry. It was dark. You should have reported this early, you know that. I'm reporting it now, aren't I? I found it on the doormat when we got back. Could be from someone who's just trying to scare you. Oh, well, if it is, he's doing a very good job.